To create an Office 365 Groups or Teams service in Avpoint Cloud Governance, first log on to Cloud Governance and then click on Settings. On the Settings page, under Request Management, we click on Service. On the Service Management page, up at the top we click Create. On the Create New Service page, you can find options for groups and teams under Provisioning, Lifecycle Management, and Administration. In order to see all of the services that are possible, you may need to scroll to the right. Under Provisioning, you can set up a service so that users can request to create a group or team. In Lifecycle Management, you can set up a service so that users can request lifecycle management, such as archiving and deletion of groups and teams. And under Administration, you can set up a service so that users can request to change group or team settings. Let's take a look at that one. First, we have to give the service a name. and an optional description. Below that, what language do we want the service to appear in to the users? Then we select a category, in this case, administration, since we're changing settings. Do I want this to belong to a specific department? For our example here, I'll just keep it simple and say I'm the IT person setting this up, and I don't need that changed by business users, so we'll even hide it from them. Where should it be available? Through the catalog, meaning users can browse the cloud governance catalog of available services and then go through the form to fill it out, and or at the end of questionnaires. If we scroll down, permissions allow all users to use this service or define conditions. Maybe I don't want a standard business user able to request changes to a group or a team, but I do want, say, team owners to be able to do that. So we use the dollar sign so that we can pick from our variables here owner, and I'll add that to the list. Who is the service contact? Who is the person responsible for answering questions related to this service? I'm going to choose the administrative account here that I'm using for my Office 365 tenant. You can see the same as down at the bottom. They do not have to be the same. And then we click Next. Next, you have to pick an app profile. This is an app profile created at the Avpoint Online Services tenant level, and specifically, this would be an Azure AD app profile. Group or team scope, allow changes to any group or team, allow changes to groups and teams owned by the requester. Now, we selected group owner on the previous page, but that was just really for visibility. Who's able to actually just even see it within the actual service catalog? This lets me dictate if I want that to be an owner who can actually make those types of requests. By essentially saying only owners can see it, and then only owners can make those changes, you make that much more restrictive. Now, what changes should we allow? Name and description, do we want owners to be able to request changes to those? Changes to the subscription settings, essentially how and when people get notified of changes that are being made in the group or team. Changes to the outside sender settings. Changes to the contact information, primary or secondary group contact. In cloud governance, the contact is different from the owner in Office 365. It's an extra level of association typically assigned to a business owner rather than a technical person. Scrolling down, do I want to allow them to request additional owners or to remove owners? Since they are an owner, I'll say yes, I will allow them to do that. And if we allow them to add, that could be any user across the enterprise. That could be peers and direct and indirect reports or just direct and indirect reports. This is important for whether or not it is allowed within your governance policy that people from other teams within the enterprise can be added to specific groups or teams. Now again, that's for team owners. So perhaps I will only allow owners to be done within peers and direct or indirect reports. And then if we scroll down, this is simply membership. So if I say yes, I want to allow other people to be added to the group or the team. Maybe here I'll leave it set to any user. So someone who works in a different department can be added to a particular group or team for collaboration purposes. Towards the bottom, should they be able to enable Teams functionality for an existing group? And finally, metadata. Do I want to allow them to add or remove metadata as part of this service request? Finally, step three. Again, we get asked about metadata. Select the metadata to be made available to users when submitting a request. 
So what metadata would you like them to see on the request form? Scrolling down, what's the approval process? I have created one previously to be associated with groups, teams, functionality. Remember to create approval processes. We have to go back to the settings page and click approval processes. Scrolling down, do we have any custom actions that need to be run at any point during this process before, after approval or after execution? If you do, you have some information here you're going to need to be able to point to that custom action script. And finally, do you want to have this set up on an execution schedule, which means upon approval, it doesn't kick off automatically. It will run later on uh, in the day. If everything looks the way we want it to, up at the top, we could click Save, which will save this configuration for the service, and we can come back to it later if we need to continue working on it. Or if I'm ready for it to become available, I can click on Save and Activate. So I'll click on that. And here we have our brand new change groups team settings in our administration category. Thanks for watching this short video on how to create a cloud governance Office 365 groups or teams service.